from um, Matt Willy Golf. This was a serious one off Twitter, but it adds on to the. Um, he asks you, "What is more challenging to make, serious or humorous video content?" Um, the serious, uh, without a doubt. Um, okay. I mean, the let's put it this way: the funny content that I make is more technically difficult. As far as you know, I. If you pay attention to any golf yep. shop video, just pay attention to how many times the camera angle changes. Yes, I do. Yeah. So I mean, the the setup and just you know reading, you know, when you're reading from a script and you have to do multiple takes and it takes yes. a while. Whereas, like, if you go into a launch bay and you're just talking about a golf club, yeah, you might flub up a couple times, but you can do a jump cut, and it's like. Yep. You shoot that video in an hour and, you know, you're done and you're, yep. you edit it in an hour and you're done. But yep. the the technical videos are more difficult as far as knowing what you're talking about. And you have to be spot on or you will get torn apart by the wolves in the comment section. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I didn't take – I don't take – like I said, the, the game's a hobby to me, and I don't take it that seriously. And that's why I knew kind of midway through, I was like, I don't really want to be into yeah. the serious like club reviews. Like I do my own kind of style of club reviews, but it's yeah. just very opinionated. It's just me saying, you know, don't waste your time with this, or hey, this might be something you'd be interested in. But I try not to get too technical because that's – I'm I'm out of that business. I, I I did it for ten years, and I yeah. just I, I I'm done with it. I don't want to I don't want to fight those battles anymore. But yeah. yeah, making making serious content is more difficult as far as the content itself. But from a technical standpoint, with uh, making the, the the funny stuff, it, it takes it's a lot more time consuming to do it properly. Like the the, the level you're doing it as, because I agree, I've watched the videos and the amount of like you said different angles that you film from. It's fantastic the effort that you put into them, and I think that's again. I don't know how many people actually do appreciate what goes into it because, like you said, you have to really watch carefully. But those videos, no, whatever, well, you no, are, no, I my, if 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 you if you saw it, if you understood it, then I would be bad at it because <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the idea yeah, is, is it's, 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 trick, yeah. it's supposed to look natural. It's like yeah, yeah. I, I've always been told, just it's like. If you do good sound, if you do good lighting, if you do good editing, people should never know. They shouldn't know. Yeah. But yeah. if you but do it, if you do it poorly, they'll going, know. There's a lot of man hours going into those videos. Is basically what I was trying to say from what you, what you make. There's a lot going. A five minute video, and I dread to think the amount of man hours that you put into that. Uh, yeah. I mean, if do you want to know? Because I'll tell you. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay. Many? Well, let's let's do it this way. Let's just say like a standard golf shop episode. They're usually like two and a half to four and a half minutes long, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, writing that script is time consuming because I don't just like, hey, let's just wing this. No, I mean, I, I, like, I write a legitimate professional right. script and I have them all saved. I have every single one, but I write it and then I'll usually do a couple drafts on that and then I have to set up that shoe. I have to find time that works with my schedule and whoever else is in the video schedule yeah. to make that. And I also have to, uh, to go there and set up all the equipment. I mean, now it has to do with lighting and it has yeah. to do with the camera. And most of the time I'm doing this by myself because the people that are helping me, I don't want to put that burden on yeah, them. Yeah. They're, you know, I'm, I'm, they're there on their own time and they're yeah. helping me out. So I set up all this stuff. So just in that alone, I mean, you think of how many like, hours going yeah, into that incredible. that planning and then the shooting of it like i said it's multiple takes multiple camera angles you're talking three to four hours i mean everyone who works with me quentin especially will tell you that my saying is one more time yeah let's, let's do it one more time and when yeah. i say that their eyes roll roll in the eyeball so yeah. hard because they know that they have another 30 another minutes of work to do. <laughs> yeah so yeah. they but when we do that that's that's where it ends for them, like Quentin, yeah, perfect example. That's where his responsibility's done. But then, you know, I have another probably Edition. five or six hours on that video because yeah. I have to go through every take and see what take matches with the take before. So yeah, yeah I mean, one f three four minute video that turns into twelve hours real quick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that that because that's probably something that uh, I, I imagine a question. I'm sure I've seen been asked of you before is that. Why don't you produce content more regularly? Yeah, why I mean, not, right? There's the answer, isn't it? 
<laughs> you know, without a doubt. And it's like, as soon as you get like a little bit of a success, and I noticed this right around like 10,000 subscribers, and uh, it, it was like, why aren't you more popular? Why don't why don't you make more content? Like they forget that you have a day job. Like I yeah. work, I never, since I've been 18 years old, I've never not worked 40 hours a week. I just never have not had a job. Yes. And it's just not, I mean, all the way through college even, I worked at the golf shop, but I worked nonstop and just think about that. Like every time you go home and you sit down and you watch a TV show or every time that you go out and you play golf, imagining rather than doing that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Editing yeah. or shooting yeah. a video. You yeah. do that. You do that. I mean, you do that for a year. Yeah. It's like it, it wears you down quick. I mean, yeah. I, I, I try to like every year I kind of s- slow down in the winter months. It's kind of a nice break for me. It gives me time to sit there and breathe. But Trust me, if I had the time, I would do nothing but just make just videos. Not. But I just, yeah. it's its not in the cards. It's not possible, especially the way I do it. Now, I yes. tried to introduce segments where it's like, you know, my over easy segments where I kind of just sit and talk about some stuff that's been happening with the channel. Yeah. Or Easiest. I do, yeah, yeah and I, I do the hard boiled segments where I do some club reviews, which is, yeah. is fun for me to do. But I... People want the golf shop episodes. They do, yeah. They want yeah. the rap videos. They want just they want what they came for, and I don't blame them. But it's hard. It's hard to deliver yeah. that. So for me, it was if you had the opportunity to, I suppose it's working making videos for YouTube. So if if financially you're given the opportunity to make the videos uh, as your career, would you enjoy? Would is that something you'd like to do? No, I. I, 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 I don't want to, I don't want the pressure of it. I don't want okay. the expectation where it's like, and that's what a lot of people don't understand. I think what kind of turned me off as far as working in the golf industry is like, I don't want somebody telling me what to do. I don't want someone kind of being like, Hey, I paid you money. Make this video for me. I don't, yeah. I don't want that because it's like, I want these videos to come from like inspiration. I don't want them to come from, yeah, yeah. I don't want them to come from desperation. I don't want it to be like, Oh no, I need to make this. Uh, I need to, to, to turn out a video because it's been two days and I have to put a video every two days up or otherwise people don't subscribe at the rate that they did last week. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was too much. And it was, I, yeah. I think every YouTuber, I don't care the genre. I think they all go through that and they learn that lesson of like, they get very yeah. obsessed in those early stages when you when you start to see the numbers come through and you start to see the increase and you become very obsessed with it and it's almost to the point where that's where I walked away uh like yeah. you know about a year ago and it just it became yep. too much and I don't yeah. and it was because of that pressure and it was all pressure I was putting on myself so I can't yeah. imagine if I had to to work in an industry yeah. where they where they were like, hey, we need a video every two days, or yeah. you lose your job, like I don't, I don't want to. Yeah, it is without doubt. It's the biggest difficulty because you, you know, and we, um, I did a video uh, similar to this about what content you produce and how often you produce it and the reasons why, and then selling out, and making quick, easy videos. I've, I've I've been through all that process. It's very difficult to find a balance with all this because I think what people. I don't think what anybody realizes unless they do it is how time consuming it is, but also how much sort of, uh, I know it's obvious to say, but that time impacts massively on your life. And every, YouTube is obsessional in the sense that you feel a huge pressure to produce. If I haven't put a video out for two or three days, I'm coming out in a sweat. Yeah. And, and that's not a nice thing to do. And then you, then the, the video you do put out is put out for all the wrong reasons. So yep. it's good for you that you've found a way anyway, at least that you sound happy enough in, in the sense that you know, you're putting the content out uh, and you're in control of it, really. Yeah, I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm over trying to make content. Uh, I mean, I've, I've said this in, in multiple ways to multiple people. I mean, even on social media, it's like I don't make content for my subscribers to watch. I make content that I want to watch, you know, like, and it just so happens that everyone that follows me, they also enjoy that. Like, I'm not going to make a video anymore. I used to, but I'm not going to make a video anymore that I I wouldn't sit down and watch myself. And it's, 
it, it makes it much more enjoyable. It makes the process much more enjoyable. Yeah. And I, it just kind of takes all the pressure away from everything. Now, um, don't get me wrong. I, I still like, I, I love it. I, I, if, I don't know if you've ever uh, noticed that usually within like the first 24 hours, it's usually the time frame I give myself after I post a video, I make it my personal goal to answer every single comment that gets put yeah. on that video yeah. in, in any video I've ever made because it's important to me that those people know that I understand they don't have to spend their time watching my content. And so if they, yeah. even if they say great video, I'm just like, thank you. And yeah. it might be, it yeah. might be it's just an emoji smiley face I sent to them. Yeah, but yeah. I want them to know that I saw it and it means something to me because means, that, yeah. that's important to me from my end because I know what that feels like to, to, to do the way around. Yeah. It's just like, I yeah. you feel so like unappreciated and it's just like, you feel like another sheep in the flock and it's like, yeah, yeah. you've seen it with, uh, with Rick, like he, he yeah. he's very active in the comment section. It, it worries me people on both social media and both people on, you know, YouTube when they don't interact with their with their fans or yep. followers, it's like I don't know what you think's going on there, but I can tell you right now that it that they don't care. I mean that yeah, yeah. they don't care. I mean I'm I'm not obsessed with it to the point where like every I mean but like I said that first twenty four hours I mean yeah I know those people really enjoy and they're there for the right reasons and I mean it it, it just. I back well, you know, when you say something to doing. somebody and you, you, you know, and they, and they see it and you know that they see yeah. it and they just ignore well, you. You'll, they just, you'll know yourself. I mean, you, you, one of the things you've built is a, is a very loyal following. Um, and if you go through the comment section, you, it's the same people that come back and keep on um, yeah, I, effectively I like building I, I a relationship. Like I know with some them. of them. Like I know some of their personality. Yeah. Like I know some of the people, yeah. I know exactly what they're going to say every time I post yeah. a video because yeah. I, I, I've, I've grown like a, a bond with the people that follow me. Yeah. I feel like it's a nice group of people. And I think that's yeah, yeah. why, like you said, like I don't go out there and I'm not like, Hey, subscribe, subscribe. And I don't, I don't, I want people to discover me organically. I want them to come to me because they discovered me because their own, you know, path took them that way. I don't want yeah. them to find me through like another venue because then it's not genuine. And I feel like they don't, no. they don't appreciate it as much. And I think that's where, obviously, that's that's the loyalty as well, isn't it? Where people, if people come and they subscribe for all the right reasons, and because of, you know they they love the content, enjoy the content, that's what keeps them coming back for more. You've got a great ratio of sort of subscribers to views, and again, every that means basically when you put up a video or how I read it anyway, when you when you post a video, everyone wants to go and watch it, which is um, you know that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it makes. And like you said, they're, they're watching for the right reasons. It, it validates your work. Like, like yeah. I said, I make the content for me, but I'm not. An, I'm not totally crazy. I I don't just sit and watch my own videos and laugh at them. I mean, I do sometimes, but yeah. I I do like when people validate it. Like, hey, I can't tell you what this means to me. Like, I was having the worst day, and this made me laugh, and that's a big deal. Yeah. That makes cool. that yeah. makes me feel like. Those twelve hours I put in making a video were all worthwhile yeah. because one person was having maybe you know a horrible day and they spent two and a half minutes just to escape and I was able to get them away from that horrible day for a little while. That yeah. to me is more important than any aspect of YouTube, social media, anything. It's like if I can just just give them a little bit of a turnaround or give them a little bit of sunshine in their day, it just that's more validating to me than a thumbs yeah. up, than oh. uh, than money, than anything like yeah. that. That's the most rewarding part. Yeah. No, and 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 vice versa. It, I think it's important to say, and maybe look at the camera for this bit, is that you know having comments on videos is also it's very rewarding as the creator, isn't it? As well, though, it is nice to see that feedback, and um, it does mean a lot. I don't know whether everybody that comments on video fully understands and appreciates the fact, but. Like you say, can only it only needs to be a few words, but it does mean a lot when you read down your comments and get some positivity. Yeah, it's uh, it is a nice thing. Yeah, and I heard Alex comment on this earlier, and uh, when you uh, guys did your the show before, uh, and I wanted to make a point to say something about it because 
he was talking about when he makes a video and he gets all these positive comments and then he has one comment through that just it tears him down and, it, and, it, and he yeah. it tends to focus on that. And I understand exactly what he's talking about because anyone who's put anything out there on the internet has had this happen to him. And it's, I understand where he's coming from, but I, if you go through my videos and you see someone say something bad about something that I did or something, you know, like make a comment. I still yeah. comment to those people. I still yeah. write to those people. Now, you know, yeah. it might not be nice what I say back, but it's important to me that they know that their words are being seen by another person. Not They're yeah, not yeah. throwing them out there into this like make-believe world. These are real people on the other side. Yeah, yeah. So I make sure that they know that. And I think that's important for other people to know. Make sure that when people say things on the internet that they're held accountable for that. And now I'm not saying give them attention and go back and forth with them. Just, no, just no. write something to them that it's just yeah. like, you know, people is like, you know, this is a horrible video. And I'd be like, you yeah. know what? You're right. And uh, your mom doesn't cook so well. You just, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Just write that yeah. and then just leave it alone. Yeah. And then block that person. Don't yeah. don't give it another thought. I, to be honest with you, I mean, on a personal level, I enjoy that engagement. I, I, a bit too much, really, because uh, uh, I do engage. Don't, don't, don't give them attention. <laughs> like I said, just throw something horrible out there about you know how their, their wife walk away. is sleeping around on them and then block them. That's what I do. That's, what, that's yeah. my favorite thing. Yeah, yeah. I almost get, you know, it, it's very close to the amount of enjoyment I get out of that from a positive one because it's like, you know, say something nasty and block them. <laughs> this is, this is, yeah, yeah, and walk this away. This is yeah. the worst PA. It's a nice this feeling. This is the worst PA announced. This is the horrible. I should probably not say that, but it's true. A lot of your early vids were at Bobbix, and we've said you're no longer working there. Uh, Brian, um, Quinton, um, do, do you miss all of that? Do you miss the job? And uh, Did Quinton and Brian both work at Bobbix, first of all? Yeah, they both, they both did, but very intelligently – when they were done with college, they moved on. <laughs> but, okay, but no, yeah, they right. they they both worked. You you all three you were there. I, was it a lot of fun? Or was it a fun job, or was it just the the bits that you made fun when you did the videos, uh, or was I it? I mean, that's the reason I worked there for thirteen years, and I think that anyone okay. who works in an environment like that, it doesn't necessarily have to be in a golf shop. It just my case was, is that it was a small business. Everyone there. I, they were like my family and they still are like my family. Like I, I, when you work somewhere for that long, it's not because nice. you, it's not because of the money. I'll tell you that because everyone yeah. knows there's no money in golf, <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. golf retail. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. It, if you work in a place that long, it's because of the people. And that's why I stayed there is because the environment was yeah. so amazing it was it was fun. I enjoyed going to work every day. It's just, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. I, and I would always talk to my boss. Like, I, you know, he would ask me how things are going. I'd be like, you know what? I was like, this would be the perfect job if it weren't for golfers. Yeah. 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 Well, I think again, going back to Quinton and to, and to Brian, that they, they again came, came across as nice people as well, uh, even through the videos, didn't they, to be fair to them. So again, you get that you, through the, through the videos and you still got obviously a strong relationship with uh, Quinton, I assume. Although, no, um, I, it's Quinton's not a jerk and I hate him. You did tell me to withdraw that uh, invitation, which um, yeah. I did politely. I did politely, and Quinton, Quinton seemed fine <laughs> by just, it. So he, I'm not kidding you. Five minutes ago, he just texted me. He's like, "Hey, did you start talking with Andy yet?" So <laughs> is he right? Okay, yeah. I told him we cancelled it, so I hope he replied with no. No, I'm not. I'm not. I don't talk to him anymore. Uh, <laughs> so um, I, I also I can't uh, not mention Scuba Steve. Um, you clearly have a, a great relationship, and you seem uh, very much a sort of family man anyway, with that bits and bobs that I've seen on the channel. Um, what does what does what does he make of all this? Uh, and when I say all this, I mean the kind of whole YouTube thing. Like, my dad, it's hard to, to explain him to people because he's he's so unique. Let's put it that way. I Because I know he watches your videos, so I have, to, I have to make sure that he hears what I'm saying to him right now. He, him... In this whole YouTube thing, like you would think he's like Brad Pitt in his house. Like he just, he, like he's become, but it's not like he's not, he's earned it because 
people genuinely love him and I do not understand how that's possible because he is uh, okay you know if you've seen the videos you know how he is but like people at work call him scuba steve like when people come in like they're like hey that's scuba steve over there like that like yeah, yeah. he's become like this like local celebrity he's, in his circles yeah, where yeah. people now don't call him anything other than scuba, scuba steve. steve yeah or scuba yeah yeah and it's just yeah he he, he loves it he, loves enjoy, it. he embraces he it. Loves it he's like He'll be like, oh, uh, I think my fans want to see me do this. And it's like, don't talk like that. Don't say that, okay? <laughs> yeah. that, you don't have yeah. fans, okay? But he does. He does have fans. They do, and they buy his t-shirt. They buy shirts with his silhouette on them. Like, I don't yeah, understand yeah. that. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, if you if you told this to 14-year-old me, I, I would have lost, yeah. lost my mind. I would have went. That isn't going to happen. No, yeah, there's no way because, that's going to happen. Because my friends would always mess with me in high school and they'd be like dude your dad's so cool and i'd be like don't say that or we can't be friends anymore but like now <laughs> yeah. i know they're still saying i it. have twenty seven thousand people telling me yeah. how much cooler my dad is than me the yeah. guy he wears cut off t-shirts and like swishy pants every day and he's i like i can't but, but he wears it well he, uh, don't say that <laughs> but <laughs> i just i just like People, if there's anything I want people to know about my relationship with Scuba Steve, it is that what you see on camera is exactly yeah. it. If the camera's running, if it's not running, it's all there. That, me, yeah. the frustration, me yelling at him, him yelling at me, the, the, the conversations and the way in which we have them on camera – it is the exact same. And a lot of times yeah. you'll see frustration, like genuine frustration yeah. in one of us. That's a hundred percent real. I, my goal genuine. when I edit those videos is to leave in as much of the genuine. There's yeah. been times where my dad will turn on like camera scuba Steve, where he tries to like be a care. <laughs> he tries to be what he thinks scuba Steve is. I, I cut it. I yeah. cut it and I edit it out. And he's like, why'd you do yeah. that? And I'm like, that's not what these videos are. I want, the real portrayal I can't remember of you. To but, he's a, but he's evolving as a character. You've just got to let him grow, I think. No, he doesn't. He he is he has <laughs> been the same person since I have had consciousness. And but the thing is is that I I had an old I said I had three brothers. My oldest brother was four years older than me. So when he turned twelve, he wanted nothing to do with me. I'm eight years old. My youngest brothers, they're four and five years younger than me. They're born 13 months apart. They were best friends. So here I am, middle child syndrome. I have nobody within my household to play with. We lived out in the country. So my yeah, dad, yeah. From, the, from the age of when I could walk till I was... 13, 14 years old was the, my, he was my only friend. He's my best friend. Your friend yeah. He, yeah. He's my best friend to this day. And I, yeah, I swear, if you don't edit that part out, we won't talk again, but we, be, we, my dad, my dad is very much my best friend. And that's had its difficulties on our relationship when it's time for it to be father and son time. It, it's it, it yeah. doesn't work because we have always yeah. been best friends and it, it's always been that like when we spend time together i mean we treat each other like there's no respect there father to son he doesn't treat me like a son yeah. i don't treat him like a father we are just like peas in a pod right. and we our relationship yeah. has never evolved it has never changed we have always been the way we are the only thing that's changed is that he's gotten older and he can't beat me at basketball anymore. And he can't beat me, you know, playing uh, or, or like a, a foot race. At, and he doesn't like that, does he? No, because he doesn't no, like that because at all. By the looks of him, and I'll, I'll find a picture and I'll post it one of these days. Uh, you would never guess how athletic this man was when right. I was younger. I mean, he was okay. a, a legit track star. He was a legit, right. like, just talented at anything and everything he ever tried. And it's, I've seen him, you know, he just would demolish me at any sport when I was younger and golf was the only sport that I could, I could compete and I could take him in at a very young age. Like 
you know, around around 12, 13, I would beat him. So he, he basically, and the, I, I can see now watching the videos that he's, he's still got a very much a competitive uh, side to him, hasn't he? Yeah, he thinks that's what's like, <laughs> I don't, I, I never play my best against him because he knows how to get inside of my head. More than, I mean, and no one else can do that to me. I don't care about anybody else and what they say to me while I'm in a competition, but him, because, you know, there is that like dynamic there where it's like, he's my dad yeah, yeah. and there's that friendship. But when he like starts to get and like dig into me, like he just, he gets in there like a, he yeah, like a, like a, like, what do you call those puppet master? He just pulls all my yeah, strings yeah. and he knows he knows what makes me mad and he knows that's the only way that to make it close because it, skill wise if you if we go out and play golf at a, a golf course without a camera it's not even really that competitive. There's yeah. been times where he's given me yeah, games yeah. but it's not that competitive. Yeah. But when we play at our golf course that we made our Beverly's Hills the longest hole is 112 yeah. yards. I, I mean, he's right there in it, and he just he has no quit. Yeah, yeah. You can't get him down. You can't. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I've seen it. If, if the man could, if he could read and write, I would tell him to write a book because it <laughs> it would be one of those things where like his approach and his mental game, it's something he's never shared with me, and it, it's no. so selfish of him because he he has one of the best mental games I've ever seen of anybody. But he holds it close to him, and he won't share it with me because he knows that's know. his only advantage. That's what he always told his own yeah. son. And that you should show you how cold blooded this man is. He won't even show his own son how to win. Instead, he just he wants to just demolish me my whole life. And to this day, I mean, I still. But it's made, it's made you the man you are, Randy. That's what you got to remember. I have night terrors. I can't sleep at night. I, I I'm a, a mess. And anytime you know I'm around, I get the handshakes and stuff. And he just. He has no yeah. idea. Like I said, the father aspect's not there. The friend is because he won't. He, he he just has no interest in my well being as his son. He just wants to continually crush me on YouTube. Mm. It's it's interesting because throughout the whole interview, this seems to be the most therapeutic element to it. I don't get it. Like why do you why you guys always want to talk about my dad? Huh? You know how hard I work? Huh? You think he, he does nothing? He just sits there and he takes over the show and he, he boasts about it. Makes me look like an idiot. I uh, I did a podcast literally uh, like four days ago. Same thing happened. I'm like, hey, yeah. just nice even keel, Randy. They bring up. Scooby yeah. Steve and all of a sudden, oh, it just it's like they all they, it's like they're just waiting to talk about him till the end it, because they know I'm gonna it's just lighting the fuse. It's just lighting the fuse. <laughs> and the best of it all is it was Scuba Steve that told me to ask this question. What? He said that this question This was that his he, question. He knows that Do you the see what I mean? Are, go. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, this is him. He's like he's like generating his own buzz. Like he like he yeah. makes his own fame, and it's like do you, how do you not see this? How do people not pick up on this? The man is a monster and he needs to be stopped. Well, I think we better leave that one there. He's, I mean, I think the one good thing is on a serious note is it's clear that what 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 you said uh, partway through that explanation was the fact that the way you are on camera, you and him, is again real. And it goes back to that, what we said is that when you're, so when you're doing your course vlogs at Beverly's Hills, People get to see uh, it's the it's the real you the the real real in that case Scuba Steve <laughs> and uh, you just I, I think that's the appeal again they see that relationship they see there's no one trying too hard it's no fake going on yeah I think that's a key to well that's the channel being if, if I take if if I answer you seriously when I play golf with my dad out there at that course that we built there yeah there's no course. There's no place. There's no one. That's that's it. That that to me, if I get one more round of golf, I'm going out to that place and I'm playing around with him. And it's it's wow. just to me, it's just I don't know. It, it's just like it, it means a lot to me. And I see in people's comments, they're like, dude, like if I had one more day to spend with my dad, like that's how I would want to mm -hmm. do it. And it's like, dude, I do it all the time, and I'm appreciative every single time I get to do it. And it just it it's one of those things that I know a lot of people 
don't get that opportunity. And I do not, I do yeah. not take it for granted. And all joking aside, yeah, I absolutely, it, it means, it means a lot to me and I'll, I'll never, yeah. I'll never take it for granted. And once again, if you put this part in the video, I will, we will not speak again. Yeah. yeah. To be honest with you, I can't even reply because I get too emotional. So it's, uh, <laughs> you nearly brought me to tears. He's an then. idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, to be honest, I, I, and again, it's safe for, I, I played golf with my dad this morning. I play majority of the golf. I, due to the, the way in which it's set up, the golf that I do now, I don't play, very rarely play any sort of serious golf, as you call it. So I play um, nine holes on a Friday afternoon and 12 holes on a Sunday morning. And that'll, without doubt, 99% of the time, it's with me dad. Good for you. And uh, yeah, it's great because it's the one time we've always, we've got, again, the competitive element has dropped off a little bit in the sense that uh, it used to be exactly the same, um, brought up a very much a hard school of, uh, would give you absolutely nothing yeah. um, and never let you win. And um, yes, we still, we still, I, I literally couldn't, seriously couldn't talk about it because I would get too emotional. So I'm not going to, but uh yeah, we, we played golf again this morning, and it, it, it's it's brilliant. And the one thing I love about golf, and this is away from the uh, interview altogether, is that the one element I love is that you can play golf from a young age to a to an older Absolutely. age. Uh, you can still remain competitive because of the handicap system. It, it, they're all the bits that I think are fantastic about golf itself and why it's such a great sport as well. Uh, and that whole relationship thing that you can build with, whether it be with your dad or your, your mates and all the rest of it, uh, it's a huge part of the game that's... Um, if you're not involved in it, I don't think people really understand that side. It's no, I, and I think that that's what? kind of what the attraction to Beverly's Hills is. And my dad has said this, and I think he said it in quite a few videos, is he calls it the the ultimate equalizer. He calls that because yeah, yeah. if you think about it, I don't care. I mean, I've seen 95-year-old men hit 100-yard shots before. So it's yeah, like yeah. It, as long yep. as you can still stand upright and you can hit yep. a shot – Oh, you know, yep. over 90 yards, you can compete out there. And that's what's so great yes. about that course is it takes away every advantage I have because he can hit it 100 yards just as easily as I yep. can. And it just takes yep. it and, oh, and yeah, and it makes it competitive again. And it takes it yep. takes me back to when we used to play those pickup basketball games in the driveway. You know, it takes me back when we used to stay up till midnight playing ping pong in our basement. Like, it takes me back to those times where... I got to see him and admire his athleticism and be like, man, I really yeah. look up to him and I, I yeah. want to be like that someday. And he's completely flipped it on me to where it's like, I don't, I don't want to live anymore because he just beat me and I don't, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> like I, I, I can't be around him right now, but it just, nah. it's, it's so fun. And it's, nah, it's and that's, that's what makes it so it's enjoyable cool. is that, it's like you said, you can play the game forever and he's a testament to that because he's so old and yeah. he's so just weak now. He's so weak and old and he can still play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There could be a few comments about that one from him, I think. Um, but yeah, it, it is. It, it really is nice to watch. I'm going to, I mean, I'm pretty much, well, one hour 13 in, I'm going to end it there because um, I'm pretty much at the end of the questions and I honestly, I enjoyed every bit of that. Um, it was a, it was a great chat, I don't, and from a personal level, I've asked the questions that I want to know the answers to as well. So, I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed it, yeah, Randy. Absolutely, thank you for taking the time to to talk. I hope it I hope it helps in your recovery from all the things that you're clearly you suffering thought, from. This is what you guys <laughs> do: you bring everything to the surface and then you walk away. It's like free and clear. Yeah. Here I am alone at my house right now to deal with this boiling emotion, and then you just got to go off yeah. and and and. Do whatever you well i i will text you a number just in case <laughs> somebody i can because, talk uh, to yeah i'm a little bit concerned I'm just gonna, after the Steve i'm conversation. just gonna call my dad and yell at him it's all right yeah 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 that's all that happens. now brilliant stuff uh, carry on making the great content that you do um one day and i don't know whether it will it's ever feasible we may get a game at one day and uh, i look forward to that and also with uh, scuba steve and quint and everybody hey, else you, involved you in have an time. open invitation anytime you want to come out to beverly hills yeah. um, you got free lodging no, i'm, I'm sure my dad would love to have you <laughs> yeah 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 no, it's brilliant honestly uh so everybody thank you for watching that um I, like i said most of the people who watch um who watch my channel will 
be well aware of Randy's, but if you're not for whatever reason, I'll put a link down below and uh, make sure you go and check out his stuff and uh, and subscribe and uh, just become, uh, I was going to say a friend of his channel because that's pretty much what you'll end up doing. It's one of them things, he posts a video, you click and watch and uh, it's it really is good stuff. Uh, thank you again to Randy for that hour of time he's just given to uh, to this channel. It's been absolutely brilliant. Um, comments down below, love the feedback and uh, I will speak to you all very soon. And once again, see you soon, Randy. Thank you.